this devil's delegate here giving you his thoughts on Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. We're talking Tasha's Cauldron of Everything today, particularly the Bard's College of Creation. It was updated from the Unearthed Arcana version, which was underpowered, so best forgotten. So the College of Creation, this is for bards who see the universe as a great song and want to influence reality, tapping into the very basis, the primordial nature of the music. Well, kinda. The college is less focused and less epic. Mechanically, we're looking at a little buffing, a little pet, and a lot of utility. So let's dig in. If you're taking the College of Creation, at level 3, you get the Moat of Potential, which was called Note of Potential in the Unearthed Arcana. Three enhancements to your Bardic Inspirations. When someone uses your Bardic Inspiration for an ability check, they roll twice and take the best. That's nice. Very fitting for an inspiration. You've super inspired them. If they use it for an attack, it has a die worth of damage in a five-foot area of effect attack, which will come in handy at low levels if your fighter is wading into a pool of minions. And if they use it for a saving throw, they gain temporary hit points, which is very nice if you happen to need some temporary hit points and you don't already have some temporary hit points. Mechanically, these are all nice, though not spectacular. And as two of the three enhancements aren't really directed to what the inspiration is being used for, there's going to be a lot of times when they don't really matter. And the style's off. First, the description has a little moat, maybe a note, musical note, or a star or an emoji floating around the character. I know kids like this game, but do features need to be quite so cutesy? When the inspiration is used for an ability check, the mode explodes in glitter. These three features also lack consistency. The extra roll for the ability check fits with inspiration, and I suppose the temp hit points kind of go with being inspired, but how does a tiny grenade fit as inspiration? And what does any of this have to do with the grand notion of creation? Well, that last complaint is taken care of by the other level 3 feature which is Performance of Creation. With Performance of Creation, you can make a medium or smaller sized item of a limited value that exists for a few hours. The size and value rise with level. Well, this is better theme-wise, and it can be very useful. The feature points you to the equipment chapter of the player's handbook for examples of what you can make, um, but doesn't limit you to those. If your DM interprets that as a limitation, this is going to lose a whole lot of its luster. But using this feature, if you need a weapon, make one. If you need a ladder, make one. You need a wall for cover, make one. This is useful, but not that useful. Most of the time, a bit of shopping will cover this. Doesn't your rogue already have a thieves kit? Check with your DM if a kit is a single item. When you go into battle, doesn't your warrior already have a weapon? Um, sure, at higher levels, being able to make a wagon to carry your loot can come in handy, but again, it's situational. This whole thing is useful, but situational. Keep in mind, whatever you make is clearly magical. It has musical notes and little sparkles about it. So there's no throwing off your pursuers by hiding in a barrel. They're going to know which barrel you're in. Likewise, you can't make something and sell it because everyone's going to know that it's going to disappear in a couple hours. Even though the objects display magical wrappings, Jeremy Crawford has indicated that they can be used as the material components for spells, which gives this yet another use. Again, not that overwhelming a one that shopping won't usually take care of because you can't make terribly expensive items. You can only make things that are 20 times your bard level, so none of that great gem designing here. But for smaller level things, this can come in handy. Um, do want to cover a couple things that have been brought up around the internet already on this. 
No, you cannot make an anvil in the air and drop it on somebody's head to kill him. Any objects you make are made within 10 feet of you and have to be on a surface that can support them. So if you're on land, it's on the ground. If you're in the water, it's got to float. So you could make an anvil on the ground, but it's going to have to be a pretty cheap anvil. Same way, you can't make a suit of plate armor. By the time you can make plate armor, you could buy it, but we'll get to that in a minute. There's also no dropping an iron cage around your opponents the way an illusionist can. Because first, iron is too pricey, and second, you can only make items in an unoccupied square. Strangely, this feature says you can make an item, not object. So you can make a horse. A horse is a creature. Oh, there's some slippery slope problems going to come out of this. I'm pretty much waiting for that discussion. When a player asks the DM, So what is the gold piece value of an elf? At level 6, you get Animating Performance, which allows you to animate, bring to life an inanimate object, which means you create a pet. Pets are useful. Rangers and druids have them, so why not bards? And this uses the new pet mechanic, which is being used in all sorts of different classes and spells in Tasha's. You'll be able to command it during your bonus action, and... They've written it in so that you can do this the same uh, bonus action that you are giving out your bardic inspirations, which is helpful because you're already a little short on bonus actions. Uh, it can attack for you. It can fly. If you make a large item, you can ride it. So it's useful. Is it new? Well, for the bard, not so much. Via Magical Secrets, you could already take any summoning spell and get all kinds of pets. Find Greater Steed is a standard choice for Magical Secrets and gives you a much better pet. One that's smarter, one that's faster, one that doesn't need you to control at every turn using your bonus actions, one that will do more damage, and one that doesn't go away after an hour. It stays with you indefinitely. Of course, that doesn't come in normally for a bard until 10th level, and you can pick this up at level 6, so it should be weaker. But how exciting is having a lesser pet a little earlier? Well, it does free up a magical secrets slot, and that's nice, uh, if you don't mind having a weaker pet. And certainly around levels 6 and 7 and 8, this is going to be good. So, it's fine. You'll like having it. At level 14, you get Creative Crescendo, which is less its own feature and more simply a modification of performance of creation. Now, when you make an object, you can make multiples at the same time, though only one can be maximum size, and the gold piece value is no longer a concern. So now you can make that temporary plate armor, Although at 14th level, your fighter has probably just gone out and bought some. You can also make a ship. You're not going to be sailing the seas with it since it's temporary and you'd end up drowning. But if you want to cross a lake, go down the river, you can make a ship. So this is a very nice addition to the previous feature. It just feels a little disappointing. It would have been nice if that had just been tacked on to the previous feature, saying at higher levels you get this. And then here we get something else which would better tie into that whole epic nature of the Song of Creation. But this is what we get, and it's pretty good. And that's really what you say about the whole College of Creation subclass. It's pretty good not new, it's not exciting, it's not filled with anything that you're not doing other ways, it doesn't quite bring the epic flavor, but there's nothing bad in it. A good solid subclass that will be fun to play because of all the not terribly important but enjoyable things you can do out of combat as you animate things or 
uh, create things around you. It's nice. It doesn't really compare to the lore bard very well, and it has the unfortunate situation of being placed right next to the eloquence bard in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And the eloquence bard is really good, making College of Creation come off as a little shabby. Later I'll be doing a ranking of all of the bard subclasses, so I'll just say that the College of Creation ends up somewhere in the low middle. That's it for now. Keep playing d and I'd suggest excessive drinking. It's really the thing to do during a pandemic. <laughs>